Hey love, Shantara Garbier here. Welcome back to our brand Pell Studio, the studio for entrepreneurs. If you're new here, I'm a brand new product photographer and I teach entrepreneurs like yourself how to become more productive and how to take high quality images for your business. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys a few different ways that you can shoot your own hair oils at home. Okay, you guys, let's get into this scene. The first thing I want to highlight is this backdrop. And this is actually some contact paper from Dollar Tree. I'll post a link down below if I can. And I'll also post a picture on the screen. The next thing I want to highlight is this foam board. I purchased mine from Walmart for about 88 cents. The next thing and the main thing is this product. This is actually an oil I use, um, I create for my own hair needs. But the label, I just created it for this video sake. And then I also want to let you guys know that if you are interested in knowing where I got these glass dropper bottles from, I'll leave a link down below in the description box. The next thing on the scene is this black hair clip, which I purchased from Amazon, I believe. And then this right here, this is actually an oil diffuser. And I don't really use it for the oil diffuser purposes, even though I will one day. But I thought this was a cute prop and I actually picked this up from my local Michaels. And it's really cute, you guys. And it also came with this eucalyptus leaf. But I decided to take it out for this photo shoot. And also, guys, if you wanted to, you can just purchase some dried lavender, which they do sell at Hobby Lobby and probably any other floral store. And then this right here, this um, vase. I'm pretty sure you can find a vase that's similar at any craft store or maybe even Walmart or Amazon. Also, guys, these little spits, which look kind of like, um, I guess, dirt, leaves, or some type of trash. This is actually the dry lavender, so I decided to leave it on the scene just to create a little bit more character. The last thing on this scene is these rocks, and I purchased these rocks in a set from Michaels, and it was about six bucks, I think. Um, but I'll also be sure to leave a link down below. If not the exact ones, I will leave some similar ones in the description box. To recreate the scene that you guys just seen, the first thing you want to do is place a piece of foam board down and leave a little space. By the way, um, this disc I did purchase from Target is just a white regular disc, but um, you want to make sure that you have some type of table or something that's close to a wall, preferably. Leave a little space from your wall to your foam board. After your foam board is down, the next thing you want to do is take some putty and place it on the back of your contact paper. All right, so after your putty is on your contact paper, the next thing you want to do is place it on the wall. And there's a gap right here in between my desk and my wall, so I'm just going to stick it through here. And then I'm going to push this foam board back so that there's no shadow. Because what will happen if you decide to take photos and leave this little thing right here, the shadow is going to show up in your photo. So make sure you push that foam board all the way back just to minimize those shadows. The next thing you want to do, you guys, is to make sure that you have a full product. And the reason being is because you may want to get a little creative with your shoot. And you may want to take some of this product out and put it onto your scene. And then also, half products or empty products don't look as visually appealing. Then the next thing you want to do is just to wipe any fingerprints away with either an alcohol pad or you can use this. I got this from some type of lens cleaning thing. Um... I will try to leave a link down below of where you can find one of these because I can't think of exactly what this is called. Just know it's called like a cloth or you can even use a microfiber towel. And cleaning your product off now will save you a lot of time when it comes to edit. So product is the first thing that we're placing on the scene. This is the next thing that I'm placing on the scene. And the way I'll know if everything is in the right spot is basically by taking test shots and seeing um, how I like the placement of things and move forward from there. As you see in the photo, I did take these things out mainly because I took the photo already and these did not look good or contrast very well with the photo. But um, if you did have like eucalyptus inside the product, you may want to incorporate it in another photo session or you can incorporate it in a different way but not inside of here. Taking my hair clip. Okay, y'all, so let's get into these rocks. Like I said, I did purchase these in a pack, a pack full of rocks that I purchased from Michaels. Um, but the way I found the exact rocks that I want to use for this photo shoot is I kind of just played around with them and I kind of took the rocks that had the most black in them, which is this. 
and this to contrast a little bit but not only did i go by the color to choose the um right rocks i also went by the height and i kind of like just played around with them to see like what look right if i stood this up and you see they're not all the same size so you want to make sure that you get rostered are not the same size and you want to make sure that you get rostered are going to contrast with your product so you guys this is actually a new rule that i'm going to try so um when I'm taking photos, I tend to take a lot of photos. So this time around, I'm gonna try to keep a minimum of 10 or a maximum of, of 10 rather, because when it comes to the editing process, um, when you have like 30 pictures of the same thing, it can be very time consuming and I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm gonna try that new rule um, with only taking 10 photos or only keeping 10 photos because um as you see they're pretty much similar photos so it doesn't make a lot of sense to have like 30 of the same photo so i'm gonna try it out and i'm gonna count on you guys in just a second and some of them you just know like they won't be the right photo because the angle is like so freaking weird so you can automatically delete those what i typically like to do i'll show you guys on the screen i like to keep everything like half and half that way it's not too much of this bed drop and it's not too much of this bed drop it's half of this bed drop and half of this bed drop if that makes sense kind of like this versus that you see how um it's not too much of this or too much of that all right you guys i think i got some good photos so towards the end of the videos i'll show you guys exactly how i edit everything because if you can see right now i have a ring light on and i have my gold eyes on and there will be a, a video link down below in the description box so that you guys can see exactly how i set all of my lights up per each product photography session but as you see there's like um the ring light right there, go dots right there, even at the top. So I'm gonna show you guys how to edit that out. I have exactly 10, oh my gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep, I have exactly 10. All right, y'all, for this next scene, I'm kind of just playing around with it to see how I like everything and the way everything is set up. And I decided to go ahead and use the eucalyptus again. And in just a second, I'll explain the scene to you guys so that you guys can recreate the scene yourself. And every little detail matters, you guys. You see how these are like evenly spread it out. And at first, like one of them was hiding behind the other. So every little detail counts. So here's an example of shooting portrait mode. And here's an example of shooting landscape mode. As you see, um, if you, I were to crop this image, it will not look as good as this image and it will not incorporate as much of the scene, as much as uh, this floor and this uh, wall, essentially, it will not incorporate that as much with the landscape photo versus the uh, portrait photo. All right, y'all, so pretty much the same props as before, except for this right here. This is a little DIY project that I did by using some stone spray paint. And it was a round coaster that I spray painted to get this effect. And then the next thing that we did differently was take the top off the product. And I set it over here by the rocks. And I also, let, let it focus. And then I also um, poured like a little of the oil on top of the rock so that you guys can see the texture and appearance of the oil. Not so much texture, but the appearance of the oil. It's leaning on the rock. That's how I got the oil dropper to stand up. And at the bottom, I have it stuck to a piece of putty. Okay, y'all, for this next photo, I will be using my camera remote. And the reason being is because I do have a Canon camera, but it is not necessarily letting me connect it to the app. So if you have one of those Canons that does connect to the app, then you're more than welcome to use that. Or if you're using your phone for a product photography, then you can also set your timer on your phone. So to get this photo right, you want to make sure that your camera is focused on your product. There we go. And you want to squeeze as much oil as possible. This dropper doesn't let me fill it all the way up to the top. So you want to fill it up as much as possible. And then with your camera remote, you're just going to point it towards your camera. And take the photo. Also keep in mind that I'm standing all the way over here so my shadow is not in the scene because if I were to stand on the other side, 
I'm right in front of the light. So as you see, it's so much shadow up on this backdrop. So that is why I decided to stand on this side away from the lights. And you don't see any shadow. Squeeze this up one more time and I'm going to get another shot. Okay, y'all, so starting to edit this photo, I'm going to zoom in where the lights are showing the most. I'm going to go to the Spot Healing Brush Tool, which is already selected right there. And I'm going to kind of follow the trace of the light. And since I need to, I'm going to make this larger. Get rid of that. Just keep on clicking away until all that white is gone right there as well. I can even get rid of this because I want this product to be as true as color as possible. Yep, it looks good. Get rid of this Godox glare. Okay, that was a mistake. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the size of this brush and get as close to the label as possible. Get all these little dots. And if you can avoid it, please try to make sure that you're not touching your product right here as much. Wherever it can leave a fingerprint, try to avoid that so that it can save you time in the editing process. Just gonna do this. Make it larger if you need to. Delete that and the shortcut to delete again is control Z. Delete. Okay, so I may leave that right there. Nope, I'm not gonna leave that right there. So let's figure out a way to delete this. And okay, so I made it larger. Let's see if that helps. No. Nope, that isn't helping. So let's try the patch tool. Take a sample of what you don't want and transfer it down to what you do want. And I'm gonna use that spot healing brush tool again. Good. Every time I go up, so let's make this smaller. I didn't see that up there. I don't want. Okay. That may have helped. I'll zoom out. Not too mad at that, but I still see it and I don't want it. So. Okay. Another thing I'm going to do is take this clone stem tool. Take a clone of that. And try to mimic this little line where the oil stops. And they may look good. It's a little bit noticeable now. So I'm going to erase that. Okay. 
Go to the bottom, make sure it isn't any dirt on the bottom, which I don't see. Make sure it's not any hair or any like anything like that on top of the rock, which I don't see. Nothing on the label and nothing in the background. No hair inside this tube. And sent up. Oh, it's a piece of hair right here, though. <laughs> so just go in with your spot healing brush tool and delete this piece of hair or erase it rather. And I'm gonna leave this right here because it's kind of the um, rock glistening instead of the light. So it's this rock glistening onto the product. So I'm gonna leave it right there since this is a part of the product. And to save, just go to File, Save. Once it says 100%, press the X. It's going to go right into Lightroom from Photoshop. There's After, or Before, After, Before, and After. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, I'm going to get to educate, encourage, and empower by sharing this video with another entrepreneur. Especially you know they can find it helpful. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Hey.